Hi, hand readers. One of my favorite quotes comes from Eckhart Tolle, who says, The eternal is your origin, your home, and your destiny. And to some extent, this sums up the significance of today's topic, which is about the realm of chi, which is the spiritual and religious realm, the realm of the unseen and the immaterial, that is so intrinsic to the five element system of how to read hands. I maintain that without some inquiry, at least, into people's religious and spiritual lives, that a palm reading is incomplete. My name is Jennifer. I'm from Johannesburg. I've been reading hands and teaching about chirology and palmistry for many years. If you'd like a reading with me, or if you're interested in my material, or if you'd like to study with me, please contact me. You'll find my info at the end of this video. Of course, many times as hand readers, we meet with people who have faith in a higher power of their understanding, people who actively pray, meditate, or perhaps have no real sense of emptiness or deficit with regard to their chi realm of their life. They are agnostic, they're atheist perhaps, or they just get on with the job of living. But then again, other times, some inquiry into this realm you find that there is sadness, there is loneliness, there is emptiness, there's bewilderment, and there's a great deal of suffering, actually, about feeling disenfranchised and disconnected from any sense of spiritual identity. And it's in these cases that a deep inquiry is very rewarding, both for you as a reader and for the client with whom you are sitting. In my career as a hand reader, I've several times met with people who've been brought up in a family where the father is some sort of religious leader or minister and is a pillar of virtue in the community, but at home is an absolute tyrant, sexually immoral, controlling, narcissistic, unkind, cruel, etc. And of course, this is a tremendous double standard that can leave a person feeling very disillusioned with religion. Another example comes to mind of a Jewish child who, when on holiday, is allowed to eat bacon, but at home it's forbidden. And to a sensitive child, this double standard could also be very disillusioning and leave a long-term, let's say, resistance to and <clears throat> sense of anti or against the religious upbringing and therefore a reduced sense of spiritual or religious identity, a sense of unbelonging. Many people have told me how they've been forced as children to attend a house of worship but saw through all sorts of hypocrisy and had a, an aversion, for example, to the monies required by that house of worship. People who, for whatever reason, couldn't identify with their indoctrination and became very disillusioned with priests, with rabbis, with imams or gurus. A thumb ring is quite an interesting entree into the conversation with your client about what is going on for them spiritually or in the religious realm. Now, a thumb ring might signal a longing in a person for spiritual comfort or support. In the digit analysis of the five element system, thumbs are actually governed by chi, thumbs being our most evolved digit and in a sense representing consciousness. Worn unconsciously, a thumb ring might signal spiritual loneliness and disappointment. A thumb ring might even aspect, for example, someone who's brought up without any religious affiliation or identity. And this in itself might leave a person feeling alone or spiritually adrift, without a sense of belonging, without any sense of communion with her higher power. So many people have an affiliation with the angelic realm, with unseen friends, guides, and also are curious about the concept of having a higher self. Influence lines on the inside of lifelines or earth lines are an entree into a conversation. These influence lines, the sister lines, might be very faint. They might hang suspended without any apparent starting points, or they originate or link in some way to the earth line. And one can say that the person's strength might be sourced from non-material dimensions. In other words, they have support from unseen friends. So many people with these influence lines are very spiritually attuned, attuned and really love to deepen into the conversation during a reading 
about their resonance with the angelic realm, as well as perhaps how they might have been influenced by spiritual teachers or guides. Perhaps even receiving messages from departed loved ones is a concept or a conversation that very much lies within the chi realm of the counseling and coaching model that is part of this five element system. It's not uncommon for me in my readings to feel a strong sense of the presence of the person who's with me's departed loved one. I personally occasionally do have experiences, sometimes olfactory, sometimes physically physical sensations, visuals on what that person, what that deceased past person looked like, and perhaps a message for the client. If you as a reader are experiencing that level of intuitive sensitivity and getting messages for your client, Clearly, this would be part of the chi realm of your conversation. The realm of chi also governs our sixth sense and the inner voice of knowing. And many people, of course, are aware of their intuition and love to explore the conversation about which markers in their hands might aspect their intuitive sensitivity. Now, memory loop to metaglyphics are one of the markers in hands that aspect psychic ability. The water-governed teardrop-shaped glyph pattern lies like a pool upon water-governed moon mounts. Here we have water added to water. The water element is doubled, which activates sensitivity, it activates imagination, and of course intuition. This glyph is known as an activator of the awareness in the person of non-material realms. For example, myth, mysticism, symbolism. I mentioned here that the term memory loop has nothing to do with having a good, especially short-term memory. It's more about memories from perhaps the collective consciousness from the dream world. Dreams too belong in the realm of chi because of their symbolic significance. And people with memory loops often have very good dream recall and have an, a natural ability to interpret dreams for themselves and for others. Remote viewing and how to cultivate and develop psychic ability are very common chi realm conversations in chirology readings. The realm of the occult is also chi governed in the system. Here in South Africa, we have people who believe a lot in black magic, who believe that spells can be cast. And in my role as a reader, in this instance, I do need, as part of my repertoire, some recommendations about banishing and protection. And these are rituals. Of course, rituals, as Thomas Moore said, are formulas through which harmony is restored. And people are very comforted when we offer some form of a suggestion of how to protect or banish negativity from their lives. So others believe in demonic possession. You know, these are conversations that really are part of this realm, this realm of the unseen. And one needs in the repertoire, as a reader, some way to support people. Other themes in the chi realm are hungry ghosts, soul fragmentation, psychic leaking, and soul retrieval. And then there's death, dying, bereavement, the longing for death with completed or considered suicide. These are counseling themes that belong in the chi realm, as is past lives, parallel lives, future lives, and the possibility of the influence of these lifetimes, these prior and future and parallel lifetimes bleeding through into this lifetime. Of course, not everybody believes this, and it depends on the client. I calibrate to see where the person is at spiritually, are they open to the possibility that we live in a multidimensional quantum field as a in a holographic field, and perhaps the person could be very curious about the sense that they are experiencing, for example, parallel lives in other dimensions. There's several other markings that might take you as a reader into the conversation about things linked to the chi realm of this five realm model. And these might include the Ring of Solomon, it's always about spiritual wisdom, the mystic cross is another one, the bow of intuition comes to mind, pointy fingertips is a sure sign of an intuitive person, translucence of the skin might, especially on the top of the hand, aspects of spiritual soul. So you can really ease into the conversation through the portal of several different possible markers. 
Using the Five Realm model as your context within which to do your readings takes your hand reading to a new level. We define the physical, the emotional, the vocational, the mental and spiritual aspects of people's lives. And in this way, by the time your client leaves the session, they'll feel that we've tapped into at least to some extent into each and every area of their life. Please help me to grow my channel by liking and subscribing. In the next video, I'll be talking about bent middle fingers. That's the Saturn finger in the old palmistry and the earth finger in the five element system. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching and listening.